Welcome to Conversations with Sarah. Today I'm joined by Carolyn, an iridologist from Iridology Scotland, to have a conversation about what our eye colour can communicate. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you uh, for having me, uh, Sarah. Thank Good you. Uh, my life has always been about eyes, um, and I know a lot about eyes. I am an iridologist in Scotland. I studied um, iridology as a complementary therapist, as it's not under the NHS yet. Um, but I'm originally Dutch and I lived in France. So when we studied for optician optics, um, we have one of the topics as iridology. So uh, I've been reading and knowing about iridology for a long time. Yeah. About 30 years. Um, yeah. I'm almost 50, I'm 49. And I studied, I think when I was 22, I, I had my certification for optician. So, I've been doing iridology for a long so, time. Yeah, quite quite a long time. Um, so uh, when I connected with you, um, it's iridology is not something I had ever heard of before. <laughs> um, so for people that are listening that are in the same boat as me, going, oh, what is this thing? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, iridology is the study of the fibers, the delicate fibers in the eye. That's where you find the color of the eye, the iris, and it has nerve endings so all the parts that connect to the brain the nerve endings are shown in, it's not just the nerve endings obviously you have muscles little vessels tissues other tissues but the nerve endings will be uh, shown on the iris so the the ends of the the nerve the spinal cord will be on the iris the iris uh, forms in the embryo when the baby is um, forming and it comes out of the brain so it's part of the brain and you know what I like to think about is we can see um, how we see the world outside with the eye, but the world can see what's inside of us through the iris. So there's two ways for the eye. Yeah. And that's, that's fascinating already on its own. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm... you know, you use your eyes to see, but also yeah. I can look at you and see what's inside of you. Yeah, and I will share that I recently had a session with you and was absolutely blown away with um, the accuracy of the things that you picked up about um, the health conditions that I have. Um, and there's things that I don't talk about that you were able to recognise and ask me questions about and give me some guidance of how I could better uh, look after my own well-being and that's why I was really really keen to have you come on as a guest because um, like they say the eyes are the window to the soul but clearly the eyes are also the window to the rest of what's going on in your body um, so it was, it was for me fascinating um, so who who would you say that it is helpful for who are the kind of people that you think find this kind of treatment useful yes um, I, I really like that quote, that, you, that famous quote from William Shakespeare, the eyes are the window to your soul, that, that yeah. was the original quote from, yeah. from him, and yes, it's not just to your soul, because um, also to the organs and every bodily system in the, in the body, so that's, uh, that's an amazing one. I think, um, the, going to your question, I think it's for everyone, Yeah. Um, everyone who has a little bit of knowledge about alternative therapist as well who knows a little bit of a holistic way to treat the body that is not just a medication for something that happened in your arm it's treating the person as a whole so not yeah. just um not just one system so on the eye we can see everything we can see um how emotions are playing out things that affected you emotionally any traumas um bodily systems that are having problems um so all that is, is shown on the fiber. So the way it works, um, I'll, I'll explain actually how, how it all started because it, it makes sense this way. Um, it started a long time ago in the 1800s, 1880, I think it was, a little boy in Hungary um, had this amazing experience with an animal and he saw something on the iris. That experience never left him. Uh, he became a physician. He worked in a, in a hospital. He worked in a ward where he could see lots of accidents. So after a while, he started to correlate what the organs and systems that he could see on his patients coming in uh, before and after the surgery. And he could see the changes in the iris. Mm. Back then, obviously, it was just a <laughs> magnifying glass or something quite rudimentary. But nowadays, with the technology we've got, um, we can bring the pictures, really close up pictures, really big, 
and we can see the individual fibers. And this is how it works. Um, this person called um, Ignaz von Petzeli uh, in Hungary had started a chart. So he started drawing where the bodies would correspond in the iris. That was the first chart that obviously with technology um, has been studied a lot more. Um, and recently there is a, a chart that corresponds really, really well. Um, it's used everywhere in the world and it gets updated each time there is some, something um, that we can find out and is um, validated by all the radiologists and the colleges and the guilds and everything, we can probably add it. So um, this chart, so you have the bodily systems and no eyes the same, no, no right or left. So there's little drawings that go corresponding to the organs. And if there's markings on your iris, for example, there's a hole or a line or any dots or anything on those bodily systems can mean analyzing everything because you need to study, not just looking at it, yeah. study the whole iris with the whites of the eye, the sclera, any little vessels that are pointing to different things. Everything together um, can, can determine if there is a problem. Yeah. Usually what we can see is if there is some inflammation, uh, if you need to detox, if there is a little bit of too many toxins uh, around the, you know, the pupil or, or different systems. So that's the main things we see, but it can also pinpoint to areas that people have been having trouble finding what the problem was. And that's the, the bit that really interests me. Yeah. <laughs> because people come to me after they've been to, to the doctor for a while and they can't really find what the problem is, could be allergies, could be different things. And all that is showing in the iris and it could be just one little thing that we can see a mark and say, well, the problem is the liver or the problem is, you know, something else, the kidneys or something. And then we can, we can um, plan out uh, what to do next. Usually I don't go really strict changing everything. I just ask the patient to be aware of what the focus should be on. If mm. it's, uh, you know, the eye, and, you know, I don't know, the liver or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then focus on that, make sure that the food is, is, is the nutrition is, is going to that organ. Uh, anything that has to do with meditation or, or focusing on, on, on these areas as well. Everything helps. It's not just the one thing, you know, we have to be... Yeah. In, in harmony with everything. If your life, your work life has to be well, your home life, your hobbies, everything has to work. And that's the, the bit that I really like as well um, because it's holistic, you treat the person completely. Yeah, I think um, that's probably what, what resonated for me as well because not only did you say, look, this is what I think is perhaps going on for you, like in the report it was like, these are the different things that you can do to support your wellness. Um, I didn't feel that I was being um, dictated to. <laughs> I felt that I was simply being offered um, some points to reflect on and implement in my life if I wanted to make the changes that I wanted to make. Um, so that for me was brilliant because I hate being told I have to do something <laughs> um, and generally will rebel against it, even if it is in my own best interest. And I know many of the people that I come into contact with are the same. So being able to kind of have this information and know, you know, you've got a choice then, haven't you? You can make a choice that this thing is perhaps going to help me towards wellness or <laughs> or I can stay where I am and do what I'm doing and yes. continue to have the symptom that I'm having. Um, it really, I, I really did genuinely find it so interesting and so helpful um, having, having the consultation, having the session with you and, and the feedback that you gave is so comprehensive. Um, it, yeah, absolutely yeah, brilliant. I mean, this is the thing that I like when people contact me, they are taking charge of their health already. The first step is to, reach out and want to know what's happening. And I think that's already a big thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other bit um, is that when I ask them to send me a picture of their eye, because I see people adaptations face to face, but I work on iridology remotely. So um, people will send me a picture. And when I ask for that picture, I think I'm giving them a little bit of responsibility, something that they have to have a look themselves. It's not me telling you, this is what I find in your picture. You're yeah. thinking the picture yourself and you're already noticing, oh, I've got a little line there. What, what does that mean? Yeah, that yeah, mean absolutely. So that, that's what happened for me. Yeah, and I think that makes a big difference. 
I had a job um, in a technical uh, environment and we always ask the patient or the, the, the client to do something themselves first. And I think that really works when you ask the patient to do something. So they, they start taking responsibility, they, they had a look at their eye. So it's not me coming up with, oh, there's a dot, where is that dot? No, <laughs> you've seen yeah. it because taking a photo, they really clear a photo because it's so hard to get a, big, a, a really good picture. Yeah. Um, the front of the eye, the cornea is reflected. So anything that is in the environment, windows, anything will be showing there first. The iris is a disc, it's a, it's a straight disc inside. So it's very difficult to focus on the iris. So yeah. you have a few hands to get a good picture, but unless it's really neat, I can't really blow it up on my screen and put the chart and see the individual fibers because that's what I need to see. I need to see how far apart they are, what drawing they make and all that. So the study goes really in depth. And I need a really, really good picture. And I know that's one of the challenges that I had was getting a good photo. Um, I always close my eyes when I have a picture taken anyway. Um, and we took the photo in front of the window and all of this stuff. So getting a good photo absolutely is very important. Um, and you you had some pointers and you had some places that you could send me. So I don't know if you want to share how to get a good yeah, photo I've to got, people. I've got, yeah, I've got on, on Facebook a, a couple of videos, but also on the website. But I would say if you've got a little torch, no light, that you can shine a little bit on this side of the eye. And then with your phone, you know, somebody else taking the photo close up or your phone, you need to pinch, oh, my phone is off, pinch in the screen. So make sure that it's quite big, that I only see the eye on there. And um, people send me the photo of the whole face. Yeah. I don't need to see that. I just need the You just want the eye. eye. You just want the eye. Um, and as you said, you work remotely. So if somebody listening thinks, oh, yeah, you're the person that I want to work with, what's the first, how does it work? Do they, they, they find you on your website and send you contact? Then what happens next? Yeah, so the, the way I work, and it's not for every audiologist, I don't think, but the way I work is um, having a conversation first. So I offer um, consultation, a free consultation, the last I usually last about 30 minutes. It can be more uh, depending, you know, what, what chat is about. But um, it's about 30 minutes and I explain everything that I see. So people have to send me the photographs first, even a couple of days before. So I have the time to study them because as I say, I have to put it on, on my computer and then draw all the all the maps on. And that takes me a little while. And then I do a draft. I, I already type what, what issues are. Uh, on there, um, so I can talk during the consultation. The consultation then it gets booked on on Facebook or, or just let me know on the phone or on the website, and I book it on. Um, once we have the chat, it's usually on even Zoom. We can do it on Zoom, but it's usually on on Messenger or on Facebook. So I phone on there, so you can see me. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really easy. Most of people have found me on Facebook, so they have already Messenger on Facebook, and we can do it that way. Some people don't want to me to see them um, and that's totally fine I can do it over the phone and um, so we, we have a chat I can tell them what's going on in the iris and if they're happy they can go onto the website and um, check out uh, you know pay for an ideology analysis there's different options there as well you can have the analysis and the follow-up you can pay as a package or you can pay for children it's a bit cheaper and I do recommend parents do it for children so that they know exactly what kind of child they have what nutrition they need, what they need to avoid. Um, and I think it's so important. People don't, don't usually think of the children. They think of people who are already elderly, who, uh, who are sick and who want, um, you know, treatment. But that's, yeah. that's a so part of it. For you, for you, there's, it feels like it's important that it's maybe a preventative tool that you're able to have a look at what your body is needing potentially in the future and 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 taking steps to avoid illness is that am I understanding that correctly it's absolutely right absolutely you hit the nail on the head um as I said I'm an optician so I work for the NHS um I, I work in a shop in Scotland locally when I live and I've seen it for years you know people come in only when they have a problem and iridology is different is preventative so we see things and we try to treat the patient uh, before the symptoms happen when the problems are not there yet but they're 
a little bit of a signal already in the eye. Mm. Sometimes it's tendency, sometimes it's already something happening and you're not aware because the, the body will only show something quite serious when it's already sick. Um, mm. And that's sometimes a little bit too late. Not always, but it's sometimes too late to treat, you know. Yeah. It's better to reverse the condition only when it started uh, at the early stages and then um, everything really works. But um, I'm not criticizing the NHS because I love it. I had my baby, yeah. everything was free. So I'm, I'm forever grateful. You know, yeah. it's not like that in Europe. You pay a lot of money for all this. Um, but it's not preventative. It's not preventative enough. So they're not, um, they, there's always drops. There's always medicine that, is, that gets prescribed, but never something that you, you're making the focus onto something preventative. Yeah, and holistic as well. I mean, that's something I talk about every week. Absolutely, the NHS is amazing. We are so lucky that we can access the things that we can access. But with everything, there's limits. Um, and if there's there's other things out there that help us with our well-being and help us with our self-care, and uh-huh. like just being able to tap into the right thing for you is so important. So if if you know that there's a history of something in your family, I guess your service can be quite helpful for picking up and like the feedback that you gave me was very much if you do this thing this can help you Um, and that I guess was the is for me one of the important things if you do this thing this thing can help you Um, Mm -hmm. because being ill is not fun (laughs) you want to be preventing it is the best thing ever (laughs) and this is the thing I think um, people don't think about nutrition but if you know what type of body you have and what nutrition you need is like, it's everything to me, mm. food is everything. You either nourish disease or fight against disease. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It's black yeah. or white. You either take all the fruit and veg, all the nutrition, all the, all the little bits and minerals that the organs need, or you just destroy every time you eat. Um, yeah. So it's a big, big thing. Uh, there's um, a lot of focus on diabetes in, the, in, the UK, in general in the UK and especially as an optician because we do the diabetic screening so I see this all the time all the time and they never talk about nutrition never mm. and it's probably the number one thing that's so important isn't it yeah so as I said if the parents or, or somebody who has a family would look in <laughs> every member of the family that has different eyes not all are the same um, they would probably know one would need probably a little bit more veg in the diet, a lot, another one a little bit more sports, more, more movement, more exercises, and all that is shown in the iris by the way the structure is on the iris. It, it tells you a little bit what type of person it is and yeah. what what way we're built inside. So the structure that is on the iris is also the way we are inside of the body. So so important. <laughs> yeah, and just so. Like it really blew me away to think that the little tiny lines on my eyes communicate so yeah. much, so accurately um, <laughs> about what is going on inside inside my body. And I know, like you know, I do pay attention to like what my skin is doing. I know if I'm I'm dehydrated, if my wrinkles are looking particularly <laughs> wrinkly, or you know, if you get if you get dry lips, but you kind of you know you notice those things, and that's like to think that someone who knows what they're doing can look at the eyes and be able to say, yeah, you perhaps aren't having as many vegetables as you need yeah. or not moving as much or, you know, this thing could change, that thing could change. I saw, saw you um, share something about like cholesterol, how cholesterol shows in your eye. I was like, wow, that I'd never, never thought about that. And I noticed like with my own eyes, I noticed that they change. And I noticed when I sent the photo to you, um, that there was a little tiny mark in it that I'd, I'd never seen looking in the mirror, but it was only because the, the, we were so close up. And I was like, wow, like I, I couldn't wait to hear what, what it all was. Um, <laughs> and it, it is just so much that you can tell. And it's so, it just seemed really, really, really helpful, which is why I wanted to share it with everybody. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. Because... Um, as you can imagine, it's not common in the UK, as it's not part of the NHS, and um, it's not advertised anywhere. It's a bit, um, I would say, hidden. Um, but as a complementary uh, therapist, I'm um, part of the Complementary Medical Association. You can look for me up there. Yeah. 
because you've got your um, training with being an optician, being like working with the NHS, you've got that fundamental um, knowledge as well that I think, um, like in my opinion, helps me feel more comfortable that you know what you're talking. Do you know what I mean? It makes me feel, it made me, me as a client, feel yeah you know you know what you're talking about and you know I think compliment I love complementary therapies and I love holistic therapies and I and I love all of this stuff um and I think it's so important to find practitioners that have a passion about what they're doing have the knowledge about what they're doing and you know got that underpinning foundation in what they're doing as well um so yeah it's I think for me it was really it was kind of to know that you had all of this knowledge as as well it it helped me feel more comfortable with mm-hmm. you saying a line in your eye means this thing because it even though I love all of this stuff I still feel a bit resistant to some of the mm-hmm. complementary therapists some of the holistic therapies um and I think every week I kind of have a revelation of oh yeah that makes so much sense um and I hope that people that listen listening are kind of having that journey alongside me as well that it makes so much sense you know what you're talking about from a scientific perspective and then you've added in this extra extra alternative therapy and it makes sense to you does that I'm passionate. I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate. It all started in uh, adaptation. So I, I told one of my colleagues, you know, that uh, I'm an iridologist as well in other countries, not, not in, in the UK, because it's not endorsed by the NHS, but I know a little bit how to read the eyes. And uh, the doctor just said, oh, do mind, do mind. So I wrote the report and she was blown away like you, right? Yeah. She's like, oh my goodness, you should do this professionally. Go and get certified, Carolyn. And I'm like, oh, really? And you know, I was talking to the top optometrist, the one that sees people for surgeries and stuff. And this person was telling me that she was blown away. I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to do this in the UK. And that's how I went for it. Um, the Complementary Medical Association, doesn't certify everyone, you need to have um, another uh, certification or diploma, something mm. um, something more. So it's yeah. not just iridology. Um, and because I'm an optician, obviously that, that works straight away. I uh, passed on my exams and, and did everything a few years ago. But um, I know about the eye for a long time. And like I said to you, it's not just the certification I studied and that's, that's my two, three years that I know it. Yeah. Iridology. I know it for a long time. Yeah. And each time there's a new book, I buy it. I'm really, really interested, you know. Yeah. I follow every webinar. Every time there is um, something, something even in Canada or something, I attend and, you know, just trying to learn as much as we can. Um, there are some surgeons now that are uh, into it because they have these tools that really magnify everything and they can see the border of the pupil um, and they can, they can tell lots of things in the air. So I think it's looked into more and more and with the technology we have, we've got now and forever expanding, yeah. uh, we'll see of this a little bit more and more, I think, in the future. Um, it's just the beginning, I think. Um, yeah, and it, and it can only be positive, can't it? All of these tools for us to understand our own health so that we can, can take control of our own well-being um, and be able to live as well as we can. Because really, that's the, that's the important thing, isn't it? That we, you know, we need our bodies to move <laughs> and to exist within this world. Um, and we, you know, I know from not being well that I want my body to be as well as it can be. I want to look after myself and be able to do as much as I can do. Um, so why? Amazing that there's all of these tools that sit alongside uh, conventional medicine that help us understand ourselves and look after ourselves. Um, And and it's it's empowering, I think. It's empowering to have that information and take that control of your own well-being. I love every single word you said there because it's exactly right. Um, I I put it on my website, (laughs) this is the thing. I think sometimes people go off track a little, but they need guidance, so they need someone, even though in the back of your head you know exactly what you need to do and what you're doing wrong, sometimes you need guidance, you need another person to tell you, and the body just goes back on track. Um, And that's where where I come in. (laughs) Do you want to be the best version of yourself? Because you've been like that when you were a child, when you were a teenager, or even later in life, you've been perfect, everything was working, everything was so happy. And you know, when your body is in harmony, when everything is balanced, everything else is in balance. Yeah. So you have to you have to make the effort 
of trying to become the best version of yourself because then everything else works as well. Your family will be happy with you because you won't be moody, you won't be, you, you won't be depressed, you know, there's lots of things. And sometimes it's just a little bit of imbalance and just a little mineral that is off. You're a bit deficient in vitamin D or magnesium or something else. Yeah. And um, just topping up those, I try to, to, to recommend as much as you can through foods because that's the best way that the, org the, the organism um, gets the nutrition into the, the, the tissues. But, you know, some people take supplements, that's fine as well. Yeah. As long as they get loads of fruit and veg, the most yeah. that they can. Nowadays, we get so little nutrition in our food, so you need a lot of them, lots of yeah. fruit, lots of it. I've got a basket in my kitchen that's huge with lots of fruit, lots of it. People come in and like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, yeah, because one piece won't do it. I think you yeah. need <laughs> Yeah, lots. yeah, yeah yeah i agree and then i know i'm just as guilty <laughs> so i've got a fridge full of fruit does it doesn't always get eaten um but it is it's it's habits it's changing like i i know all the things that i need to do do i always do them absolutely not um and even if i'm working with I'm, I'm actually better if i'm working with a client on a particular thing i tend to be much more mindful of it myself um but we are human we all we all take the path of least resistance at times. We all fall into habit um, and it's okay. It's okay, like, because we can then recognize that we're doing it and go, oh, okay, so like, I'm not sleeping very well. Why am I not sleeping very well? I need to tweak this, I need to tweak that. Um, it's not about being perfect. For me, it's not about being perfect all the time and putting pressure on yourself to be perfect all the time. Because for me, I feel like that's kind of an unattainable thing. For me, it's about giving yourself the knowledge, making the choices and, and recognizing every single choice has a consequence. And like you've said, you can either go towards health or away from health. And sometimes we are about to go a little bit wild and do things. You know, like we might want to, if we drink alcohol, drink alcohol. We might want to eat chocolate. We might want to have a takeaway. We might want to lay on the sofa for two days straight and binge watch our favorite TV program. That's okay because then we can bring it back to the other, the into balance with knowing what our body needs and what we need to do. Um, it's just if I, for me, any extreme of anything is 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 when we need to kind of wonder what's going on okay. and 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 just sort of yeah like bring it to balance balance is the key word yeah. here i guess balance <laughs> balance it out if you had three nights of doing wild well you probably need a little bit two three days of, of being a little bit more careful it's all about balance you just said yeah. the right word everything in the body is about balance uh, even when you think spiritually as well, the, the body sometimes goes out of balance and you can bring it back. And all the therapists and everybody you've had in, in your talks, um, they speak about that. And you said that the common word is balance, just yeah. bring harmony to the body in different ways, in, in nutrition, in spirituality, in exercise, everything. And then it, it works, it just works. And you, you're happy, you're energized all the time and things just work, isn't it? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so that, that feels like a really great place to stop if that feels okay for you. Is there anything that you kind of want to leave people with as we end today? Any kind of little message or thoughts that we've perhaps not been able to, we've not covered? Or do you feel like um, we've covered everything? Yeah, just visit the website. Um, the, there's a lot there. There's blogs, there's a little bit of information, there's uh, scientific papers on there. And if you want to know more, a little bit of if you have brown eyes, water, the typical things that happen on symptoms with brown eyes or green eyes or, or blue eyes. Um, go on there because there's, there's a lot of information already. And then if you're really interested and you want to know a little bit more about yourself, then I can do the full analysis and tell you more. Yeah, so I will put your links will be in the description um, so people will be able to find them. And obviously you'll also be um, on my Facebook page tagged when your episode is out as well. So thank you so much for being my guest today and speaking with me. Um, it's been really interesting. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm so happy, so happy you had me here. So thank you. Spread the um, word make people weird a little bit more yeah exactly um thanks to everyone that's listened i hope you've enjoyed today's episode so to connect find out about more about me and my guest follow at srtt podcast on facebook and instagram i'll be back next wednesday with a new guest until then take care of yourself bye